This little dongle deck is quite an impressive piece of tech, especially if you don't want to carry around a dedicated audio player. But before I get into this one's review, thank you to the guys at Headphone Zone for making this review possible by sending me a demo unit. All thoughts and opinions are my own. So let's jump into how this is built. The unboxing of this is quite simple and to the point. The contents of the box include literature and an iFi sticker, a placard to inform you about what formats are being played when the LED on the unit changes color. You get a USB-C to USB-A adapter as well as a lightning to USB-C adapter. Then of course you get the iFi Gold Link, which has a magnesium alloy build and in fact gets slightly warm to the touch when it's doing its thing. It's got a USB-C port on one end and the other has a female 3.5mm gold plated jack for your headphones or earphones. There's an LED that glows green if you're playing back any audio that has a sample rate of 96kHz. Anything above this up to 384kHz will glow yellow. If it glows magenta, you're most likely listening to MQA audio. And if you're playing back any 64 or 128 DSD files, it'll glow cyan. And if you're playing back DSD 256, it'll glow blue. The cable from USB-C to the main unit is a braided silver plated copper one which is put together well. But the one place I found this to be a bit odd in construction is the USB-C connectors housing. It's a bit too large for my liking. If your phone has a case, this isn't going to fit unless you take it off. I would have preferred it being smaller so as to be able to be used with my phone's case on. But apart from this, it does have a premium feel to it. It's certainly got a very good finish. Sadly, this does not have microphone pass through. So if you're somebody who takes a lot of calls or likes to talk to your gaming buddies while you're playing games, uh, this will not carry over your voice uh, from the IEM's microphones if it does have one. Instead, what does happen is the microphone within your phone does take over uh, when, whenever you're on a call or when you're gaming. So uh, your recipient might say that you sound a little distant, so you might have to bring the microphone a bit closer uh, that's within the phone. Uh, what does happen though is uh, you do get playback in your earphone, so you will be able to hear uh, the person who's talking to you. It's just that uh, your signal going through will not go from the DAC itself. <laughs> On a sound front, iFi has thrown in the ES9219 chip, which is a 32-bit digital to analog converter as well as a headphone amplifier. In other words, it's doing a whole lot of science magic that tries to ensure that you get the clearest audio possible that the artist intended when you're listening to your music. So let's talk about what's important here. If you do have high resolution audio, this will be able to play back sampling rates as high as 384 kHz with a bit depth of about 32. So I think this is pretty future proof because uh, right now itself, 192.24 is becoming a little more commonplace. It is taking time to get there. So this should keep you sorted for quite a while. Also, if you happen to be into the whole MQA audio, this does support that as well. This can push out 70 milliwatts at 32 ohms, so it's perfect for pairing with IEMs. But it can also push out 40 milliwatts at 300 ohms, which might leave your higher resistance headphones wanting more power. In fact, my very last review of the Truthier Hola, those were being driven by this specific DAC amp in particular, and it drove it quite well. I did uh, pair this with my Bear Dynamic DT990. Uh, I have the 250 ohm version, and uh, you could tell that it was quite wanting and uh, uh, the volume had to be almost all the way up to get some sense of enthusiasm from those headphones. But apart from that, the highs and the lows did also seem to take a bit of a hit because they weren't as detailed and as uh, full bodied as I would have wanted them to be. So in other words, I wouldn't really recommend pairing any high resistance headphones with this DAC amp in particular. I have tested this little DAC amp with stored audio that I have, which is all high res, as well as some YouTube audio, which is terrifically compressed. And I'm happy to say that it does give you a sense of transparency, especially if you're using IEMs or headphones that are transparent enough to tell you what is compressed and what is high res. So this little DAC amp is not going to be your bottleneck within your audio loop. I did do a little A-B testing between this DAC amp and the headphone out from my iPad just to see if it really makes sense to spend a little extra money on an external DAC amp than use the internal one on your phones or iPads. Now, uh, there was certainly a difference with uh, IEMs and headphones because I found myself cranking the volume slightly more with the iPad for certain. But where the main difference was, was in the finer details because the detail recovery with the, the iFi, the highs were crisper, the vocals had a little more texture to them. In fact, the bass was a lot tighter compared to uh, a looser delivery with the iPad headphone out. So I'd say there is a significant difference between having an external one like the iFi Go Link 
compared to an internal compared to using the internal DAC amp from your phone or your iPad or even your computer for that matter. So to sum up, on a build front, I really like the way this is constructed. Uh, the materials used are quite good, in fact. The only thing that makes me feel a little uncomfortable, in fact, I do get a little anxiety when I'm moving it around, uh, is that exposed cable. As nice as it looks, uh, I just feel a little uncomfortable because I think the last DAC amp I did test was the uh, Shanling UA1 Pro, and that had a braided uh, sort of fabric around the, the main cable which protected it. Uh, I, I would have preferred something like that on this. I don't think I'd feel as uncomfortable. But having said that, this is pretty well put together. I don't think it's going to get uh, snagged very easily or it's not even going to come apart very easily because this is a quality product. And the other thing I'm a bit uncomfortable about is the fact that I have to always take off my phone's case whenever I'm using it. So uh, why this is a negative for me is because I can see somebody trying to use this while they're while they're traveling uh, be it in public transport or wherever else and ideally when you're moving around you do want to keep the case on your phone at all times so if you can't plug this into your phone and you have a bulky case that uh, is sort of a minus point for this for certain moving on to would i recommend this well i think it's a significant uh, upgrade compared to using anything internal uh, unless, of course, you're using a fancy LG phone which has a good DAC amp, then you don't really need to consider this. But if you're using other phones uh, and you just want to upgrade your uh, the sound of your IEM or your headphones uh, while you're on the go or while you're sitting at home and listening to uh, any sort of your high-res music, whether you're streaming from Apple Music or you have stored stuff on your phone, uh, this thing is a very nice addition to have. One thing to keep in mind before biting the bullet, this device only works as an output stage. Now, I did mention the thing about the microphone. If you do have a microphone on your IEMs, your voice is not going to carry through the microphone from the IEMs. It's going to go through your phone automatically uh, because this does not have any pass through. It only works as an output stage. So this brings on the further complication of if you have a module in your IEMs that has a volume up and down, it will not register that. Likewise, if you have a play pause button, which also works as a skip or previous track, it will not send any of those messages through at all. It only works as an output stage. So uh, how much does this cost? In fact, uh, at the time of recording this video, this has an MRP of 5,999, but it's being sold at the time of recording for 4,990 rupees here in India. You can buy this from uh, Headphone Zone over here and I will leave the link down below if you would like to buy it. For a lot of people, they will be thinking that it's too much. Yes, it can be if your budget is just 3000 and you want to get into the audiophile world uh, as an introduction. Uh, I'd recommend you stick to just picking up a nice set of IEMs, maybe use it with your phone for some time and maybe a few months down the line if you do want to up the quality of your IEMs, then consider putting that money towards the DAC. But primarily, if you can afford a good set of IEMs within that range, two to three thousand rupees, you can get very good sounding IEMs from headphones on itself. Uh, I think uh, that's a good way to start. And getting an external DAC amp like this will certainly up your game. And this is certainly a good one to own in the long run. So I hope you found this video helpful and informative and I hope I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. If you would like to support the channel, I'm sure you know exactly how to. But of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.